Okay, so I've talked you through what we do here at the design department in Blackheath High School. And what we'll be doing now is actually going through that process, designing and making a prototype. I personally like to use um, either a fine liner or a, a pencil, simple as that, the best tool in the workshop. Um, and we will be putting down as many different ideas as possible so that your ideas are broad and then pretty crazy and then bringing one or two or a few of them in a little bit before we make the prototype. So we start by sketching. But what we're going to be designing today and what I'd like you to do at home, ideally, is imagine that you are some sort of product designer and you are going to design and make some form of lamp, table lamp, table light, something along those lines for a hotel chain maybe, maybe a, uh, a shop chain. And what I'm doing here is I've got no idea what the lamp is going to look like. Okay, that's important. Okay, so what I'm doing is just creating a few three-dimensional shapes. Okay, and you'll see, some of you will think these look a bit sort of architectural, and that might be due to my background, which is in architecture. So I tend to turn everything into buildings, so these lamps will sort of look like little tower blocks, probably. Who knows? So I'm sketching quickly here, three-dimensional shapes. So I'm just drawing lines on. It's looking fairly chaotic, but we like chaos. I'm going to bring it back from the brink of chaos, hopefully. So I'm sort of I'm sort of creating a, a series of shapes here. This one is almost like a bent piece of I don't know, plywood or something like that. I'm giving it some thickness now. So I'm thinking about the actual product. And now I'm getting a bit sketchy with this, okay? So I don't know what I'm doing, which is important. It's important that there's a famous Canadian architect called uh, Frank Geary, who, who quoted and he said, um, if you know where you're going, it's not worth going there. And I'm a great believer in that. If I knew exactly what I was going to be designing, what's the point? So I'm actually just designing something. Songwriters often say you just start writing something and then beat it into shape. This one I'm going to maybe make this some sort of, probably a mathematician would call it a truncated square based pyramid or something like that. Notice that I'm moving the paper around and sometimes in terms of style if we round these corners off a little bit we're going a bit sort of slightly retro 60s 70s sort of style look here with these rounded pieces. Okay, bearing in mind we're going for a lamp, okay, so at some point I'm going to need to think, right, okay, I like this form, how is it going to actually function as a lamp? This one, okay, I'm going to put this on a little sort of pedestal or base or something like this. Okay, just a couple of sort of maybe openings for light to come out, the actual block piece. Maybe something like that. Okay, here I'm going to go for maybe something with a curve on it. Okay, and if you combine sort of maths and art, you do end up with design. Okay, so the geometry of this is important. So I'm actually putting on some guidelines to help myself understand how this thing is constructed. Now my three-dimensional perception is not bad, okay, which is helpful as a teacher. Um, so I'm not too bad at drawing these things, whereas some people would struggle with this. That's okay, that's absolutely fine. You can go straight to the, uh, the card modeling and produce these sorts, of, these sorts of ideas. Okay, so I've got my four ideas here and we're gonna go now quickly and model one of them over there. Okay, so we're going to go to the modeling table um, and I think we're probably going to choose this one. Sort of sometimes you've got to be super accurate and sometimes you've got to be fast and loose. Okay, um, 
Now I've got my glue gun on charge over there. I might have to just move that over in a second. I need my drawing, of course. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to make a model, okay? And I'm thinking about so big, it might be a scale model, okay? So the actual, the actual final piece may be bigger than this. It may be smaller than this. Um, but I'm gonna start with, I think, my square at the top and then I'm gonna make the side panels. So I'm gonna go quite quickly here. I'm not gonna explain everything. I'm gonna go for a nice round number, 100 millimeters, always working in millimeters. Okay, something like this. And at this point, sometimes students really take off with their ideas and really love the 3D nature of things. And sometimes people don't. I love doing drawings of, um, of designs. I don't like making them so much. I like making the models. Okay, if you're doing this at home, the old health and safety thing, of course, be careful. So I'm making a quick square here. And I know that side length is 100 mil. Okay, let's just put that on there, 100, 100. Okay, now, if I think carefully about these sides, they look proportionally about one and a half times the size, so let's go 150. I can promise you I haven't done this before with this design, so we really don't know how this is gonna turn out. Okay, so we've got 150 height there. And I'm already thinking about these shapes here, they actually tessellate. If I flip one up on the other one, they should tessellate together. So we have, let's go for a 150 there, and a 300, so a 300. A bit of maths going on. In DT, it's really important to have a good balance of maths and, uh, and creativity. Let's go over here. Glue gun, marvelous creation, glue gun. And the way that we use these, we've got a bit of a technique we use here at, at Blackheath High, is I'm gonna pop that together like so, and then it's almost like welding. Very similar to welding, isn't it? And I'm just gonna run that along there, like that, and just leave that for a minute. Okay, and that's gonna be my dark side. So if it's four seasons, that's winter. I'm just gonna cut a couple of random Let's go a bit crazy with this one, like so. Keeping an eye on winter, because that's going to need folding up in a minute. Okay, so let's go back to this one now. We go up with this one. This one, autumn, I guess, maybe. Who knows? In fact, I'm going to prop that along there and then try and do the two at the same time. And if you're welding something, and we do welding here actually at, uh, at Blackheath High, which always amazes people. So we do have a welding rig and uh, that's quite good fun. It's exactly the same concept as joining bits of card together with a glue gun. We would actually tack something together. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of a glue weld in there. Okay, and you can see it just beginning to go opaque down at the bottom. Okay, so we've now got that going on there. That's Let's get in there. Okay, so I've immediately got something three-dimensional coming up. Right, back to the uh, back to the board again for the next one over here, guys. Okay, so just for speed of use, I'm going to use this corner. I would be moaning at people at not using this section if it were a, a normal lesson. Okay, so I said 150. Okay, so let's go exactly the same again. You know what I'm going to do now. Maybe the section will speed up. Okay, so I think I mentioned earlier, my background is in architecture. Um, so I trained as an architect. And when you're designing things, you you know, people tend to sort of go in different ways. Now, I, I do tend to think very architecturally. And the whole training is very much about breaking the rules. And in a sort of respectful and 
you know, a, a, an intelligent way. And I will say the year sixes particularly, if I teach the year sixes at the junior school, we'll say, I will say to them, there's only one rule, isn't there? And they'll go, yes, Mr. Masters, break the rules. Okay. Um, and they don't mean, you know, go in and break windows. What they mean is break the design rules. So they will really push their ideas around. We may do something like this and I may make you start doing a design and then after a few minutes I may make you pick up your partners or the person next to you on the table, design and carry on with that. And the reason for that is that you're taking on something that you've got no idea where it's going. And again, it's quite exciting to design something that you don't know what you're doing. So, similar sort of setup here. The next step, if you were in the classroom after this model making, would be to make a very accurate model. And for that, I would suggest we use a laser cutter. So we have a laser cutter, which is over in the corner. Do you want to look at those cutters? Just over there. It's over there. That's it. That's the one. And then back to me. And I've just finished off these two little pieces here. And hopefully that will uh, we'll all go together on our... Uh, final little prototype over here. Now, as I'm working so quickly, I'm not gonna have time to make the stand or the base piece, but you get, you get the idea. We've designed and made, or will have designed and made, a prototype model for a, for a lamp in a very short space of time. And I would suggest that one of the reasons we use such a short amount of, to short amount of time is that it's dynamic. There's one rule number 99, I call it, and it's just do something. And what that means is that you start drawing. It doesn't matter if you don't know what it is. Because the actual, the process of drawing actually begins to stimulate your, your sort of your creative um, process, if you like. And you suddenly realise when you draw something you don't like, well, I don't like that, and that's fine. That means that you can start going in a slightly different direction. Okay, so... So here we go, we've got a, a four season lamp design, which is not very elegant at this moment in time, it doesn't matter. Okay, but the concept's good, the concept's good. I quite like that concept. You know, imagine taking that to a, uh, you know, to a, a hotel train or something like that and saying, okay, this is my concept, okay? And what we could do is we'd probably cut some um, cellophane or something like that, or some acrylic, and we could put that in there, maybe in different colors, and then we could put it on a bearing and actually it'd be a piece that we turn next to the bedside um, in a hotel room, something like that. Okay, so that's, that's the sort of the completed prototype. I'd like you to have a go at that and actually make a prototype, whether it's out of yogurt pots or card with a glue gun or with, it doesn't matter, just don't damage anything at home, obviously, um, that's not agreed. Um, but I want you to have a go at drawing and making a prototype for a lamp. Okay, now, the last thing, we're gonna go back over there. I'm just gonna sum up quickly, because I think we're almost done. I often quote different, these little you know, bits and pieces to students, and you know, I'm not trying to be some sort of sage or something like that, but it's important that you understand when people say things, that, to pick the bones out of them and to, to understand what we're going on about. And there's, there's, I have a quote which I put up almost every week, and there's one here, but we're just gonna finish on that. Um, and it says, properly gaining control of the design process tends to feel like one is losing control of the design process. When you're out of control, that's, that's quite a good thing, okay? Because you know, you're, pushing your, you're pushing the edges. So I want you to think about that when you're designing and think and push yourself on, okay? Create something interesting, create something innovative. Um, I hope you understand what I've been talking about today. Um, because that runs through every single strand of design that we do here. The process is the same. The process is the process. So go out there and design and hopefully I will see you in the near future.